the rainbow. And I'm the pot of gold. And this is our magical unicorn. Cookie the unidog. <laughs> <laughs> Who we will stop torturing right now, although she's she's managing quite well. She's actually tolerating this better than I thought she would. She's just gone numb. Poor dog. <laughs> she's like, let me out. Look at how cute you look, though. Oh, you're so cute. Magical unicorn cookie. So we are here for our traditional Halloween video. It's been another Halloween already. Already. It's, that was a fast year. It was. Barbie and Ken was last year and that, uh, that was yeah. quick. Just let us, give us a moment with the dog. <laughs> poor yeah, poor I'm critter. getting lit while I... Yeah, she's like, please, 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 <laughs> just make this go away. If it wasn't so warm in here, I'd probably just leave this on her because she doesn't seem like she's annoyed with it. But it, it's, it's not warm. that warm outside, but we had the sun oh, just sorry, blazing turkey. in through our front window and kind of heated up the whole house for us. Yes. Oh, here we go. <sighs> Got a lip. Peel. Okay, cook. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Gonna get your ears peeled. Oh, oh there you go. You're Yay. free. There. Okay. <sighs> One moment. There you go. That's all you had to survive. No more unidog. Yeah. So for those that were asking about Cookie in our last few videos, here she is. She still exists. We just had our last few videos outside and we don't bring Cookie out with us because we have too much wildlife. <laughs> Chase a rabbit. Yeah. She'd be out entertaining herself. Okay. You can go in your bed over there if you're brave enough to jump down. You're going to go check out lights instead. Okay. You can do that. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well. Now, and to match tonight's theme is my phone case. And this, this actually, I didn't just put this on for Halloween. This is what I've been using for months now. So, uh, and, and, and just for extra fun, I have a special unicorn mug with rainbows <laughs> that I love. So I get to enjoy my milk tonight in a rainbow cup. And I just get to be a pot of gold. Yes. With a hat. And real chocolate. Real gold. Keep an eye sometime in the future. This hat's going to resurface. <laughs> okay, so before we start with questions, we, okay. as usual, didn't talk about our story. Oh. But I was going to share a story unless you have something to share uh not really okay oh uh by the way one thing before we get to our story angie might be squirming around a little bit i have to i i, I have to kind of bust her on this <laughs> um hang on we can we can do this no don't move it yeah right, we, we can move it oh, no. No. <laughs> oh. it's called yeah it's called a broken foot Broken foot, yeah, because, you know, the last four years haven't been challenging enough. But there is always a lesson in it, and the lesson ties in with the last four years. Not that it's actually a lesson, per se, which someday I will probably share and do a video on, but um, I'll wait until my health is healthier, <laughs> which I hope I've been told is by Christmas, so <sighs> less than two months away. So here's hoping. Hmm. I think by Christmas it'll be a lot better. Hopefully it, our pot of gold and rainbow luck will flow with us. So this is the story I was going to tell. Okay. Yes. This could be interesting because I still didn't even read the note that I just got. Oh, well, there you go. So years ago, the first time around, what Rob and I called the first time around when we were together in 1997, he... As you know from our videos, our story videos, he could be like super intense and just like go, go, go. But then there was times he was just like so loving and so sweet, which I've learned is when he was tired. Oh. He was like that. And so one night I was at his apartment and he was on the phone. So I decided, well, I'll let him have his conversation and I'll just go home. And I go to leave his apartment and he grabs me by the shoulder and he turns me around. He's like, don't go, I'm not done with you yet. And it was so cute and so sweet. And what's funny is he still does that now. How, what's the example of how you do it now? 
uh, when we're trying to get up and in, in, let's say a Saturday or Sunday morning, we've had a chance to sleep in a bit. <laughs> yeah. Then all of a sudden she'll get some ambitious thought and try to get up. No, not done. You know. Don't go. I'm not done with you yet. And, and I had to write this down because it was so funny what you said not long ago. It was only a couple of weeks ago. You said, I'm oozing with hearts. I'm not ready to let you go because I'm oozing with hearts. That was hilarious. Who oozes hearts? Apparently I do. Rob does. Yes, Mr. Pot of Gold and your your gold apparently has hearts in it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's our fun story. Rob still says, don't go. I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> You're funny. <sighs> <sighs> So happy Halloween for those of you that celebrate. Um, and I don't think I have anything else for... Oh, you know what? I do, actually. I forgot. I wanted to say something else. I have been wanting to say this for so many videos, but then we just end up diving in and I forget to say it. I really want to say thank you. We have the nicest, kindest, sweetest followers. Every time we put out a video, your comments are always so kind and you're always thanking us for our service and for what we do for the collective and how much we um, share and give. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. That's just absolutely so sweet. Every time I read your comments after we post a video, my heart's just so warmed by your sweetness. So thank you. It's, it's nice to be appreciated. Um, as most of you know, we don't offer any services or coaching or anything. We just do videos because that's what our service is, is Twin mm -hmm. Flames. And it's just nice to have that, that acknowledgement of uh, people appreciating it. So thank you for that. Many times when we finish a video, we look at each other and go, how did that really go? What did, what did we do? What did we say? Sometimes, sometimes you know, we end up playing it over like completely through i'll listen from a distance and angie will watch it just to recap what really happened because we find that when we do a video once that moment is gone of when we said something and we've moved on to something else we can't really remember how that all came across well because often we're channeling right yes like we're, and then we'll go like what did we say did we really say that like it's kind of fun when spirit works through you which mm. is I barely what happens with Twin Flames? Barely can't remember answering that question. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun. So on the note of questions, we have a whole clipboard full as usual. Okay. And so we're just starting here and we'll hopefully get through all a page, of them. page, maybe. Because yeah. we, we seem to average five questions in a video. So we'll see how it goes. We have to see if my pot of gold starts to melt. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> could happen. It could. Or they could just start dissolving into your mouth. Yeah, that could happen too. Yeah, I won't be surprised yeah. if that happens. I didn't really have dessert after supper. I'll have my unicorn milk and you can have your pot of gold chocolates. <laughs> and they're actually not pot of gold chocolates, but they are round. And they look and they're coinish. Yes. Are we ready? Uh -huh. Okay, is the spiritual twin usually someone who has been spiritually and knowingly connected to Source for most of their lives? When I found out about Twin Flames, I assumed I was the spiritual twin because I am female. That doesn't always work that way. <laughs> but when I really think about it, I'm not sure now. I'm not sure now. I had zero interest in spirituality through my life. It wasn't until after I met my twin that I became interested in spirituality. Since that point, my logical brain has really struggled with being consistently spiritual because I just don't understand a lot of the things that are happening and I want to make, want to make it make sense. I wonder if I'm actually the matrix twin. Also, is the matrix twin always masculine energy or can the feminine energy be matrix? Very good question. I, I think that's a question we've probably never heard before. Yeah, never directly answered that way. Mm -hmm. Maybe in bits and pieces of other questions, we've, we've touched on this, but never directly. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna answer the last question first. Is the masculine, or is the matrix twin always masculine energy? 
I don't think there's any always or nevers in this journey because the journey is so unique that there's no, you know, one size fits all kind of thing. So I don't think it's always the masculine that is the matrix twin. It's common. And when we say masculine, I always like to clarify this. We're not necessarily talking about the male person because you can have a masculine energy in a female that you know the female person can be more of the masculine energy and vice versa but it's often the masculine energy that's the matrix because the masculine energy holds the more 3d energy holds the more um, logical side of things whereas the feminine energy usually holds more of the spiritual more of the 5d and that's why they're able to connect with the spiritual because they live kind of up here whereas the masculine lives down here on earth more but that doesn't always have to be the case um so no i i think you definitely can still be the spiritual twin and in fact you know she's saying um that she didn't really connect with spirituality until she met her twin which is often the case most of us don't awaken until either shortly before we've met our twin or it's our twin that awakens us. They, they activate the um, twin energy in us, which then gives us the Kundalini awakening and everything else. So just because you weren't spiritual before you met your twin, it does not mean you're not the spiritual twin. Um, you can certainly be. And if you have an awareness of what spiritual, spirituality is, even if you're not really interested in it, that still doesn't necessarily mean you're not the spiritual twin. So, um, Cookie's gonna go sit in her normal spot on the couch. <laughs> She'll be back there somewhere. Yep. But I also think you can be a little bit of both. Again, you know, there's no rule that says you have to be one or the other. You, you can be both. Like, it'd be interesting to know what your twin is like. Is he more matrix? Does he have more of the spirituality? Maybe you share that. Maybe you each have a little bit of it and that's what is part of what helps you stay connected. So that's kind of my perspective. I'm interested to hear your perspective on that. Mr. We, Gold. We've got three factors here. We've got male, female. We've got spiritual matrix. And, we've, and then we've got masculine energy and feminine energy. From my point of view, the masculine energy and feminine energy is by far the most universal. It drifts back and forth between all the other parameters. It really does not deserve to be attached to any other label because one person can have very masculine energy one day and have very feminine energy the other day or even just situation to situation. So, so for me to peg masculine energy to matrix to male, I I just wouldn't really do it all that often. Sure, it might be a trend with some people, but really, if you free up the labels of the energies from the other parameters, then many many times they make more sense. It's far too confusing to try to give it a solid label with belonging to the other two hmm. styles or parameters. So when I look back through the question, the, since that point, the point of discovering the twin, my logical brain has really struggled with being consistently spiritual. <laughs> that right there, that right there to me says a stronger possibility of being the matrix twin. I kind of relate to that because, you know, Angie every day has got numerous spiritual thoughts and moments <laughs> where I can wake up and get three quarters of the way through my day and mm, sometimes have two or three spiritual thoughts throughout the day, but rest, the rest of the day, I'm perfectly fine trying to struggle through on the 3D level. In fact, sometimes being spiritual in the middle of a busy 3D day, it doesn't help, it just slows me down because then I try to figure out like, why is this happening to me? No, it just is. Just let it be 3D, 3D and continue on. So, yeah, when the logical brain is the one that's needing to be pacified, that sounds quite matrixy to me. 
True. But it sounds like she has a bit of both. But oh. yeah, that's sure. And there's sometimes when I am when I'm in my terms, way off the end of the spiritual yeah. rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it's funny when you said I'm how did you put it? I'm like always thinking spiritual. I wanted to actually give an example of that because I thought it was so funny. I didn't even know for sure if my foot was broken. It happened at work in the stupidest, weirdest. Literally, I got up from my chair and went to fax something and my foot just went snap. It was very strange. Um, anyway, I barely got home from work. I'm hopping along because I couldn't put any weight on it. And I hopped into my Reiki room where I keep my uh, Louise Hay book, You Can Heal Your Life. If you're not familiar with that book, I highly recommend it. Especially with, if you've just broke your foot. Or any other physical <laughs> illness or things that go on. Because it gives you a spiritual perspective of, you know, everything has a meaning and a reason. We don't have things that happen in our body just because. There's always something deeper going on from them. So it was actually fascinating how my brain was like, well, I don't even know if my foot's broken or not, but what's does Louise Hay say about this? So I was more interested in knowing what the book said about an injured foot than I was on even tending to my foot yet. So yes. It was I'm, the next morning before we went and got x-rays for it. Yeah, I thought, well, we'll just wait over the night and see if it was just a tendon or a ligament and we'll go from there. And the next morning it was like, oh, okay, probably should go in. So yeah, my brain is always thinking spiritual. I'm always living up here at some level. So I just thought it was funny how you said that because it's kind of true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in pain and I'm still trying to figure out what is, what's the meaning of this? There's a, there's a meaning behind this. Well, how did I do this? <laughs> you know, when it's 11, 11 in the morning or 1, 11 in the afternoon, Angie and I like to text each other. Just say that. It's the we still ones. do that. It's the been ones almost 10 years and we still do that. It's the ones within the day. And, and when I miss that, I feel bad. <laughs> so I don't go all day going, ah, mm, well, okay, no, no spiritual thoughts. Ah, well, whatever, missed 111. No, I go, oh, no. How did I let that happen? Actually, sometimes I let it happen and sometimes it happens. And sometimes I just magically walk back to my desk one minute before I need to send the text. And for that, I go, well, we're having a connected day. So even being matrixy and 3D and all that, there's still times in the day where I really cherish a chance to just admire or feel or whatever uh, the spiritual side of the connection. It's, it's important, yeah. even, even if it isn't important often in my day. And I think going back to this question, that's the thing to remember is that even if you're not always spiritual or you're not always matrix and you're trying to figure out, well, which one am I? I think that kind of shows some balance too. If you're a little bit of both, that's great because that means you're in a, a little more balanced state too. I mean, yes, as twin flames, we naturally, one is more feminine, even though we have to balance and are feminine and masculine and one is more spiritual versus matrix and vice versa. But if you're in between them, that's okay. I, I think it's important to just allow it to be rather than trying to analyze, well, am I this or am I that? Because it's not to say one's better than the other. The matrix twin is just as important as the spiritual, and the spiritual is just as important as the matrix. They have their balances between the two. And, and really, it's, I think it's kind of very important that the spiritual twin maybe it learns to have a little bit more of the matrixy side. And the matrix, totally. And of course, the matrix twin, in, in trying to keep up to the spiritual one, and is trying to learn, understand, and feel more of the spiritual side. So as time goes on and as these balances are better better defined and, and better achieved, it it totally helps out. Because mm -hmm. if one's being really matrixy, then one day, well, maybe the other one can help out by being a bit, a bit more spiritually. Right, and then vice versa. Sometimes you're more matrix, I'm more spiritual, but then it can be reversed. You can be more spiritual and I can be more matrix. So, yeah. If you have both, that's that's great. 
But that I love that question. We've never oh. had that really in that perspective before. That's an excellent question. So, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anyone yet who is not some level of balance, even if it's 95 one side and five the other. <laughs> it, to be 100% of one or 100% of the other, wow, that would be really difficult. But it's probably easier to be closer to being 100% of matrix than 100% of spiritual. Because if a person is 100% spiritual, I don't see how they would survive on this earth. I was earth. just going to say, it'd be hard to live on this earth. I have a hard enough time, yeah, and they, I'm not like super spiritual they, compared to... They would have a hard time breathing the air. Yeah. Because even that would, it be, would be too would be way heavy. too dense a planet for... <laughs> yeah. I had the word heavy, you had the word dense. See, we're going to the same place. Yeah, see? So, <laughs> yeah. All right, next question. Oh, I, don't know, I, I still love that question, but I think I don't have anything else to add to it. This might be one of these nights where we keep bouncing back to it. <laughs> Next question. Oh, I have a question for Rob. That would be me. That'd be you. A lot is said about the fact that in a healthy and inspiring relationship between a man and a woman, the woman poses challenges to the man that drives him and allows him to fulfill himself. In a deep and harmonious connection between TF, who are not physically together, is this still required? Did you, as a man, perceive a relationship with Angie as more attractive when she created the conditions for it? Hmm, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Do these human laws of, attract, of attraction between a woman and a man also apply in TF relationship? Was her understanding, patience, and love, without idle waiting, what, you, what allowed you to overcome your fears and concerns? And the reverse question. What really allowed you to cross this bridge of non-involvement to involvement to be together? Wow. Now, that's a question I should have read beforehand, <laughs> so I had a chance to mull over it. You think? I, I, I could have read each sentence and had a couple hours and then read the hmm. next one and had a couple hours. So I got to go with what bounces right to me. A lot is said about the fact that in a healthy and inspired inspiring relationship between a man and a woman. The woman poses challenges to the man. Stop. The first thing I thought of while I was reading that is a comment that sometimes that, what, how does that work? Where the more a woman tries to make a man hate her, the more he loves her. In other words, mm -hmm. sometimes that works in a reverse fashion because then the man becomes challenged and he lets his ego try to get past all these roadblocks that she throws up in the way. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. Uh, I'm going... Okay. This is difficult. <laughs> you can tell. Is this still required? <laughs> I'm not terribly sure that it's required to begin with. Hmm. I think oftentimes these roadblocks are thrown up. These challenges are thrown out there <clears throat> because somebody is almost backpedaling from having over complied to the needs of someone else and all of a sudden they have to throw out a challenge because they need to get closer to being true to themselves. Hmm. That's a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a reach on this one. Hmm. But the fact that in a healthy and inspiring and inspiring relationship, stop, the woman poses challenges to a man, stop, that allows him to fulfill himself. I wish that that wasn't ever necessary in a relationship, but some relationships work that way. And when I see relationships like that, where people are almost adversarial, but it keeps the relationship fun and interesting through, I'd call it negative enforcement as opposed to positive enforcement, 
I, I often wonder how they do that. So um, no, not required. In fact, not required in normal relationships, let alone twin flame relationships. With twin flame relationships, we tend to have enough uh, things thrown out there to challenge the other person for growth. i am twisted that a little bit. Just because of the nature of the relationship, just because of mirroring, mm. there's enough things to get thrown out there with that kind of a challenge. Mm. So there's challenges that are posed back and forth. And in many cases, especially a twin flame relationship, it's, it's defeating those <clears throat> challenges. It's working with those challenges. It's maybe accepting that those challenges will always be there that allow the relationship to grow uh, as far as fulfilling themselves, whether the relationship has the challenge going from this side to this side or this side to this side. Uh, fulfillment, could that mean growth? It could. But as far as individual fulfillment, one person doing something to have another person feel more fulfilled, ah, there's enough challenges with the twin flame relationships. I wouldn't encourage that at all. I've actually never even considered it. Which is why this question is very interesting. <laughs> That's why it caught me off guard. What's the next part of it? Did you as a man perceive a relationship with Angie as more attractive when she created the conditions for it? I never understood the attraction so therefore when the conditions were just thrown out there i don't think i necessarily recognized them it wasn't until i understood the connection then i understood what the conditions were about were about so i needed the connection to come around first before i understood any of the conditions that angie may have created for the relationship. So connection before connect conditions. Do the human laws of attraction between a woman and a man also apply in TF relationship? Yes, there's still the 3D side. I Absolutely. like the way you're like, yes. Yes. That's one. <laughs> the human laws, I can absolutely agree that sure attraction is required now between woman and a man woman and woman man and man there just need to be the attraction but with absolutely no attraction i don't see the relationship happening because then there could be no conditions or no understanding of connection so there almost needs to be the attraction there for people to have enough interaction to understand why they have a connection and, and therefore a possibility of a relationship. And the reverse question, what really allowed you to cross this bridge of non-involvement to involvement to be together? Again, connection. I actually answered the connection portion using the other question, but yes, the understanding of connection. I think that when one person learns about the twin flame connection, there is a level of education that is almost <laughs> mandatory because yeah. very seldomly do both sides <laughs> learn about the twin flame connection and recognize each other at the same time. Yep. One side figures it out first, pick a side, and then the other side needs to be educated that there is a Connection based upon these potential parameters. Do any of these make sense? There. There's a whole lot of education in one shot, one few seconds, but it's way more complex than that in reality, and most of us have experienced that. Ah, oh, that was deep. <clears throat> yep. I needed to read that one in advance. Now, I wanted to answer this from my perspective and the work I was guided to do, because I don't know if it makes sense to you, but like, especially this last part, 
what, what really allowed you to cross the bridge of non-evolvement non to evolvement to be together. So we often want to know what the secret is for the masculine. Like how can we get them to awaken and be with us and see the connection? And what is it in their brain that changes? And I think the important thing is to remember, it's not just them, it's your connection that helps it. So you might have to do some work to help them bridge that gap. Um, whether it's physical work, emotional work, spiritual work. For me, if again, you remember our story and I'll try and link it above if I can find something in one of our story videos that kind of ties in. But I was guided to do so much telepathic work and um, spiritual healing work. Like I, I shared in one of our story videos that I found out we had an Egyptian life together where we were not supposed to be romantically involved and we ended up being romantically involved and we both got punished for that. And so on a soul level, Rob was still afraid to be together because he was carrying that energy still, a fear of like, Persecution. Yes, yes. So I had to do a lot of work to clear that on an energetic side to open the gap for him to feel safe enough to come into connection. So it's it's never just one-sided, right? The feminine or whoever, it might be the masculine that's doing the work for the feminine to come into the connection. Whatever your past connections have been and whatever you know things in the past have held you both from being together, might be what's preventing you from coming into union now. So that's why it's always important to do the inner work. That's why I've always said, and will probably always say, go within because your answers are inside. They're in your own connection and your own connection might be totally different than somebody else's. So it might have different things that you need to heal, clear, face, look at, whatever that will help you maybe heal some wounds, but also help the other person heal some wounds so that the energy can flow between you. And how energies come together. I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent oh, here. Oh, dear. Yeah, oh, dear. This can be really hard to, to describe, but energies don't necessarily align and come together the same way for different people. Totally. Like, for us, it was... a jumbled mess of everything else <laughs> and then all of a sudden she was in one spot and I came to an understanding that brought us back together. Yeah. Other people are learning and evolving together and then eventually they come together. So sometimes it's a jumbled mess and other times it's a parallel getting closer. And that's sometimes very hard to tell you. It's, it, when we've chatted with other twins, it's it, I'm often looking at whether or not they're getting closer and then drifting away and getting closer and drifting mm. away, or whether they're just not looking like anything at all and then there's moments of alignment and then not anything, or whether or not they truly are just in parallel, just not bringing it together. It's uh, three different ways of looking about looking at how the connection is developing. And of course, those three examples work in 5D and 3D and not necessarily the same at the, the same levels at the same time too. Yeah. There was yeah. a tangent. <clears throat> yeah, there always is. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have anything else to say on that one before we go to the next one? Other than if I have some ideas later, there's always, there's, there's always next video. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to dwell on or, that question. Or there might be something in another question that might bring you back to that too. <sighs> I might tangent back to it many times. Yes. That's one of those questions that I think, I, I, I'm going to tangent again. Okay. There's some events in a person's life where I, I, where I say it changes them 1%. Now 1% doesn't sound like a lot, but if you have a hundred really life altering things that happen to you, that could mean that you've changed 100%. Or does it mean that some of the other things that you've changed before have now changed again? And some of your core hasn't changed much. Oh but this is one of those questions that 
could change my perspective because I might have an aha moment or two. It's one of these questions that could change me 1%. Interesting. So in other words, I don't know how great that question was yet, but it's some level of great. I love it. Now I'm all thinking. I can't even read anymore. Do you want to read the next question? Sure. <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> There's my lack of multitasking. Can't read anymore. <laughs> can't just read right now. Hi, Rob and Ange. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Much blessings to you guys and thanks for helping us. Oh, that's very kind. Um, I would like to ask a question. After this fourth round of separation, I haven't seen oh. or heard from my twin in over a year. I'm starting to really shift away from the connection, almost giving it up to the universe and letting go. As I do this, I've all of a sudden seen him in public twice. That's so typical of this journey. Letting go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, just try it. <laughs> After seeing him, I'm very triggered again and all of my emotions pop back up. I feel like the universe truly won't let me let go of this. Why does he show back up in my reality when I start to move on? Thank you and much love. I don't mean to chuckle at you. I'm just chuckling because it's such a typical typical experience and from my experience and my understanding of what happens is when we finally do surrender we open up the channel for the other person to to feel that the energy like when we're hanging on and we're waiting and waiting and waiting the, the energy feels closed to them so they can't connect with us but when we surrender it and just let go then they feel this openness like, oh, okay, now I can come in. It's almost like the example, if you've ever heard, if you clasp sand in your hand, it's going to fall out your hole, your fingers. If you just hold it there, it'll stay. So the tighter our grip, the more we're pushing it away. Even though we think we're holding on to it, we're actually pushing it away. When we just open our hand, it almost is an invitation for the other person to come in. So surrender and it's why on the journey, everybody always says surrender because that's, that's what opens things up to allow things to flow again. But I know it's not that easy. You can't just go, okay, I'm going to surrender now. It takes, it's a process. It takes time and it takes the ego to the point of exhaustion. And that's usually what happens for surrender is the ego finally goes, there's nothing left I can do. I got to, I got to let go because I've tried everything and it's not working. The ego becomes exhausted. Yeah, totally. It just can't hang on anymore. Yep. Yep. So it's it's the universe bringing them back, but it's also them feeling the energy in a flowing way again. The energy doesn't feel so restrictive, so closed, so um, angsty. So that your twin on a subconscious level feels that and goes, okay, now I can, now I can either contact you or in this case you just start connecting again because you've opened up the portal for them to come into your energy by what the, how did they put it they just kind of show up yeah you've seen they them in show public up. yeah so you start your energy start flowing and merging together again instead of you pushing them away by by wanting the connection so much you allow the openness of it, and then they start coming into your energy. Can I borrow your arm for a minute? I'm afraid, but okay. I... <laughs> be afraid? <laughs> no humans or unicorns will be harmed in this video. <laughs> I'll be, protect the unicorn over here, and the other you know, one's safe over there. It's, it's, it's very interesting how the universe and the earth and humanity and spirituality, <laughs> how there is so many how uh, parallels on how they work. This is called holding on. And as I hold on, the energy, their energy in Angie's arm is not going to be able to flow properly no, because, it's not. <laughs> because first of all, her hand's going to go to sleep. If I keep on hanging on sure and I is. keep squeezing, <laughs> her poor hand's going to go to sleep. But as soon as my hand gets too hot, too tired, to squeeze as soon as my ego gets too tired to hold on and it just rests then this hand can wake up and this hand also feels something better than just hanging on 
how do you do that? Where, where in you does that all come from? Yeah. So you're amazing. So you just what a great example. So holding on just puts the connection to sleep. Love that. Wow, I'm like in tears. Just like wow. You might be the Matrix twin, but you got some spiritual stuff floating around up here, man. Whew. So I go to the mountains. They, That's they... profound. Wow. Wow. My rainbow is leaking, <laughs> leaking. moisture now. <laughs> it's usually rain with a rainbow. <laughs> it's leaking now. <sighs> very, very well said. Okay. I needed your arm. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll try and get my fingers. This is circulation. I really did squeeze a little bit. <laughs> I did. And I can actually feel it in my hand, but my hand's tired from from list, lifting tires. That's tire season at work. <laughs> yeah. Do tire swaps and I'm wore out. Mm. My poor body. It, it needs long weekends. <laughs> yeah. Was there anything more to that question? Uh, I think you've just answered it profoundly. Why does he show back up? Because the circulation in the hand comes back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the circulation in your joint energy comes back. The circulation in your energy comes back. <laughs> yeah. We, we need to write your analogy book, man. <sighs> um... Wow, the next question is big and it's in really small font. Why did we do this? Uh, because sometimes <laughs> when I copy and paste them, it just doesn't allow me to. Yes, it's, it's just right. computers, you know, like the challenges you were having with the computer today. Yes. Yeah, and sometimes it's just not worth fighting over it. It's like, fine, computer, have your way. Yeah, fine. the computer today had its way. I went back to a pen and paper and solved a mathematical issue because I just couldn't get the computer to do it for me. Yeah, computer it, wasn't going to go off right. so No, fine. it's something as simple as cut and paste. I just tried to cut and paste something that had mathematical formulas in it, and all it did was... It lost its reference points, and it just wouldn't cut and paste the numbers I could see on the screen. Somebody who knows Excel is really well is probably going, <laughs> no, Rob, it wouldn't work. Yeah, so I, that's why the font is small. That's because, why the font is small. Because sometimes you just learn to surrender. <laughs> Do you want me to read it? I can read it. Okay. Good, because I'm busy crying. <laughs> your, another, your other analogy just has me blown right away. All right, carry on. <clears throat> I have resonated with the TF journey, but mine started out a little different. There's lots of differences. I'm interested in this one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I saw his Instagram and noticed that he had accomplished a lot for himself at a young age. He accomplished things that I had dreamed of doing or planned of doing in the future. He worked in the same career field I planned to work in, in invested in real estate, and traveled around the world, and even joined, joined a fraternity. I had thought about joining, but decided to go a different road. I said to myself, wow, this guy is living my dream life. Then I saw his face, and it was like I met him before. There was this urge and wanting to meet him. I never wanted to meet someone like that before, and I did not know why. If this person is supposed to be in my life, Give me a sign. I started to see the word twin flame <laughs> on a Pinterest post randomly and got curious. And all the signs added up, but it was like my mind felt this was too good to be true. Not that appearance matters, but the man looks like a dream. He is tall and athletic built. I never envisioned myself being the marrying type. I always told my family that I did not want to get married or have kids. But that all changed when I saw him. It's like the signs that he is my twin are there, but something in the back of my mind at times says he is not my twin. Is any of this stuff normal? Yes. <laughs> yes, totally and utterly. <laughs> like, can you meet your twin flame before you physically meet them? Yes. Yes. Is the doubt that lingers in my head normal? It gets louder at times. Yup. Angie wrote yup. She's got a note there. <laughs> in fact, I wrote yup and then I wrote the word ego because that's the ego. The doubt part is the ego 
because the ego only understands the logical. And when all these things are happening that you can't even explain logically, the ego goes ah, and it freaks out because it doesn't like things that don't make sense. So yeah, that's all the ego. <laughs> I'll read the whole last question, <clears throat> even though Angie's already answered it. Is the doubt that lingers in my head normal of something telling me he is not my twin when in my heart I know he is? Yes. I, uh, the word twist is my word of the night. Twist? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to twist this oh, just a little twist. bit. Okay. This might not be love at first sight, but this is recognition <clears throat> of soul at first sight. Yes, yes, totally. We may not think we can see other people's souls, but the way that I analogize it is a person's soul lives on them just like another layer of skin, except to some, to actually many people, a person's soul is invisible. Other people see people's souls, but th they call it seeing a person's aura. Hmm. To me, seeing an aura and seeing a person's soul is, in many cases, very similar, if not the same thing for most per, for most circumstances. Now it's the energy of the soul. The energy of the soul, and hence why when people say that the eyes are a window to the soul, it's because in many ways the eyes are not skin. It's just the soul through eyes perception. Are not skin. Wow, those are words I've never heard together. <laughs> so that's why the eyes can be a window to the person's soul. The eyes are not skin. Yeah. I need to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Carry on. So just amused my funny bone somewhere. <laughs> so you so this person who wrote the question recognize something about this person, <laughs> namely probably because this person on a soul level has been telling the person who wrote the question their life story as it's been going on. And when, when the person who wrote the question started to see this life story, they went, oh, there it is. And then they saw the person's face who's been living this life. And it was even a deeper recognition that that hit them on a very, mm, almost on a 3D level of hold it. This is someone that I know, even though I've never met them, mm -hmm. never met them here on this planet, mm -hmm. but met them likely many times before mm -hmm. in other lives, wherever mm -hmm. they were. They could have been around the, around the corner or on different planes of existence. And it's their energy that you know, because their energy, it doesn't matter what body they're in, you recognize the energy. And so when you see them, it's like, oh my God. And I love how she even said, like, I never wanted to marry, I never wanted to have children. And this guy comes into my life and all that's changed. And that is often the case too. You know, you can have like a whole plan for your life and then your twin comes into your life and it just goes just kaboom. Just blows up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everything you thought you wanted or thought you, you, the trajectory of your life is completely changed. And even in non-twin flame relationships, let's say soulmate relationships, oh, yeah. it, 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 hits, it hits very, very hard when you recognize <clears throat> someone from your soul group. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be at a twin flame level. Yeah, just any soul family. So, I think what's a little different about this one is, is that through Instagram, this person already had developed an understanding of this person. And then when they finally saw them, either picture or picture or reality, most of the time people have to see each other first and then they see other things that were parallel or connection, parallel or connected, I mean. In this case, there was a whole lot of groundwork before the actual meeting of the person happened. Mm -hmm. So yes, 
this one started out a little different. Now there's gonna be lots of people who are gonna be saying, oh yeah, yeah, I had something similar before I even saw my twin. I already knew that they existed because of X, Y, Z. Sometimes it's just the knowledge of the connection. Sometimes it's through an understanding that somebody that meets a certain criteria or criteria or profile, like, like this person who wrote the question, understanding what the other person has been doing through Instagram. Yeah, there's, there's so many different ways that, that the connection can get started. But ours was like that too. We talked on the phone twice for hours before we met in person. Yeah. And we knew we knew each other. Yes. That was before we even knew much even about soulmates, let alone twin planes. But we just knew there was some unique connection there. And even before that, <laughs> I was somewhat urged to answer a question of uh, what you'd wrote on the note that went in the laundry room. Yeah. Like I was, I was urged, friends. just looking for friends, and I'm going, why do I want to respond to this? Why is this something that's attracted to me? I, I, I don't get it. Yep. Because we recognize the energy of our twin flame. Right. Yeah. So that's totally what this person has done. You recognize their energy before you even saw their face. And then when you saw their face, it was even more of an aha. And it's funny, sometimes it works the opposite way. Like for us, we talked on the phone and I recognized him on the phone. But then when we met in person, I didn't recognize him at all. It took me a while to get over his physical appearance. Not that it was bad, of course. It just, just, but it just wasn't what I expected. It wasn't the envisionment that I had. I had like this big burly, if you've ever watched the show, Grizzly Adams, if you've ever like been in that generation, this guy that used to like hang out in the mountains and connect with bears and stuff. That's totally like a big burly facial hair. That's totally what I thought of Rob. And then he's not that at all. And I'm like, I don't know who you are. Like it, it was hard to be connected on the emotional level when I first met him in person because the physical wasn't what I had pictured, but it didn't take us long to get over that. Then the energy between us flowed again and then we were able to have our magical day. But yeah, so it's interesting how she had the connection before she saw his face, then saw his face, and then had even more recognition of him. I had less recognition of you when I first met you in person. You were like, this is not, this is not the person I thought I was talking to on the phone. You were expecting a beard and all you got was eyebrows. <laughs> Lots of eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your eyebrows have calmed down since then and they're yeah. still ridiculously bushy. <laughs> So yes, um, I, all of your questions, yes. This is, this is very common of the Twin Flame experience. So welcome to it. <laughs> welcome to the crazy journey. <laughs> it gets crazier. Yes, and as far as your mind telling you that it was too good to be true, <laughs> uh, There'd be thousands of twin flames out there that would say, yep, that's what yep. It, certainly how one of the many thoughts that runs totally. past a person. I just wanted to see where we're at. Oh, yeah, we got time for our last question. Perfect. Okay. Now i got to get back in my seat. I should have made you do that. Okay, carry on. By the way, I wasn't quite done. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm trying Going to back to that back last bit of the question, is the doubt that lingers in my head normal? Okay, when the head and the heart are in, are not on the same wavelength, the head's saying, no, no, this can't be true. And the heart's saying, yeah, it certainly is, certainly <laughs> is. <sighs> How many times in life do you have to just follow your heart? whether it's in a career choice or where you live choice or who you hang out with choice or who you recognize as being part of your soul group or a twin flame or not choice. But that's what makes the journey so hard as the ego gets involved and then it becomes this constant battle between head and heart and logic and, and um, love, logic and not logic, logic and spirit, like... So that's what a lot of the twin flame journey is, is learning to quiet the ego. Or 
Yeah. Have it. They, Learn to have the ego take a little bit of a back seat. Well, see, the ego is also more like one of those grasp devices, too. It, totally. It, it's, it, in many cases, it, it stifles or strangles your own ability to grow and understand and trust. And especially since once in a while, the heart makes a odd little mistake along the way. And just when you think things are strong, then all of a sudden it falls apart. You have to trust your heart and it's really hard to do. Yeah. Sometimes when the ego says it has to have control, it's a more of a pr protection device, not a advancement mm -hmm. device. Next question. Yeah. Does it spill over to the any other sides? No. Okay. I tried to make it easy for you. Okay. <clears throat> I have known my TF since the past eight years, high school love. We dated for close to four years and things fell apart, but some part of me isn't able to let go of this person. It's been four years since we broke up. We are in different professions. He is going to be a doctor, and sometimes I feel a lot of factors won't allow us to be together. Profession. Uh, he's shorter than me. I don't get that word. I think cast, like... Um... Uh, stature. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. But all I want now is to let go of whatever I had with him and love him unconditionally, irrespective, or, sorry, irrespective of us ending up together or not. It's funny that ties into kind of our last comments about the last question is the ego, right? The it's the ego that's really struggling with all of the, you know, how can we be together because of all of these issues, um, and she's wanting to kind of surrender all that and just be in the moment and love him unconditionally and let go of any expectations. So. Um, so just just so I dove in before we read the last thing, or did you read that? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. So there, it's not really a question. This person's just saying any response is appreciated. So they're just saying like if you can throw some thoughts out there. So yeah, my thoughts are um, I think it's learning to ha do some ego work, having a conversation with your ego, or learning to. I've never been one to believe, like some people say you need to kill the ego. You need to like have ego death. Mm -hmm. I personally disagree with that. Um, we're human. That's part of being human. The ego is what keeps us separate. Yes, we're not separate when you understand the bigger picture, but it keeps us as individual people. I'm me, you, you're, you, you, you are you. Apparently we're neither. I can't speak. Need your, your, no. Not mm -hmm. me, I'm not. That one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's learning how to have a balance of the ego. The, the ego is important because it, it sort of gives us healthy boundaries and stuff. But it can be over extreme. So it's learning how to have a healthy balance and a healthy connection with your ego. And from what I'm hearing of what you're wanting and what you're struggling with, that's what my recommendation would be is um, do some work with your ego and just learn to understand where it's coming from so that you can help it let go and surrender a bit. Because that's what it sounds like you're wanting is to just have an unconditional love without an expectation of where this is going to go. Just let it, let it be and let it... Um, and like they say, whether we end up together or not, that's where you want to get to is the point of if we're going to be together, great. The universe will pull us together. And if we're not, that's fine, too. So that's my thoughts. Do you have any brilliant insights like you usually do? <laughs> One comment here. It says we are in different professions. When you love someone, do you love their profession or do you love the someone? the profession is going to be more important to the other person uh, from a point of view of are they in touch and connected enough? I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw a bunch of generalities in here, but 
It's all I got. <laughs> Are they in touch and connected enough with their spiritual side, their love side, enough to see past professional boundaries and understand um, the connection between the people, the respect between people. Does respect have to come from a profession? If, if the person who's going to be in the big profession can see past that, it really allows them to have a far greater ability to understand love if they're not throwing their profession in the way of who they can love or what they can love or how they should love. So really it's their growth that would look after the professions. And the reason that I want to have worded it that way is the question or the statement here, since you've already said it isn't a question and that's true, there's no question marks in there. I suppose the opposite of ego is insecurity. And the person who's made these comments is almost mirroring insecurity because the other person is a doctor, therefore I won't be good enough for their, exactly. for their love. Which in fact means they might not be good enough for their profession. It shouldn't matter if you're good enough for their love. It's, they need to recognize the love just as much as you do. And it's interesting how you said the ego, insecurity is the opposite of ego. Yeah. I see them kind of the same. The ego can be very insecure. And that's why I think there is a lot of ego because there's ego in that I'm not good enough for them because they're a doctor, but they're not good enough for me because they're shorter than me. So it's like all these contrasting things of, I don't feel good enough for them, but I don't feel they're good enough for me and other things. We come from different statures of life. So they're just seeing all these contrasts and going, I don't see how there's a fit. And to me, that's ego. Because the soul only sees the love. The ego sees all the resistance. Now, I also wanted to bring up, we did a video when we were doing our, I can't even remember the, the theme of the videos, but we did a whole something about union and we did one all about the different things that Twin Flame has. And I can't remember the word, but there's like different genders, different classes the roadblocks yeah there was a specific word for it anyway yeah. i'll link that video too because it it ties in with what this person is struggling with because that's very very common some twins have the issue of very much like this uh one comes from money one doesn't there can be religious issues that you know, your families won't allow you to be together because you have different religions or different cultures. It might be that you're the same gender or opposite genders or something like that. Or there can be physical differences. You live completely on opposite ends of the earth. And it's like, how are we ever going to be together? And we often come together as twin flames with those problems as part of our um, way of clearing those blocks not just for ourselves as twin flames, but for the globe, for everybody, to, to dismantle all of those old ways of thinking. Um, because Earth, like everybody on Earth, has those old ways of thinking. And we're here as twin flames as one part of the grid to help dismantle that and clear all those old projections. I can't remember the word, the right word. It's not coming to me, but... Me neither. It, it's in the video. We'll link the if, video. Don't you hate it when you can't remember yes. one of the 47,000 yes. moments of brilliance that we've had? Yes. When we have a word or a thought <laughs> and you know it's rattling around somewhere. and It's, it's just, like right there, but it's like I can't. Just when you need it. Yeah. But anyway, we did a whole video on that. But that's very much what this person is struggling with is those sorts of things. And I even like that they use the word cast because that is yeah. sort of a great word for that. You know, like they're just really struggling with 
we don't fit. There's lots of human reasons why we don't fit, yet I can't let go of them because there's this connection. And that's the important thing is the connection is where you do fit. It's all the human things where you see that you don't fit. And that's why it's the ego that maybe needs to do some healing and letting go of those expectations of humanness. One very positive comment I'd like to make about how this was written. All I want to do now is let go of whatever I had with him and love him unconditionally. Just put that in brackets, put a dot behind it and let mm -hmm. it be on its own. Yeah, that's a because good if you can accomplish that, that will transmit through 5D as strong as anything you could do in 3D right. to try to help this connection. Just love him unconditionally. Yeah. Let go and love him unconditionally. That will be heard on the other side. Energetically. Energetically, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So uh, that is a fantastic direction to want to go. I really yeah. agree there. Yeah. Totally love that. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel it's like a struggle between head and heart. And I think she's wanting to get to the point of just living in her heart and having that unconditional love without all the head stuff being in the way. Yeah, it's beautifully, beautifully said. It's interesting how a question isn't a question, but still creates a response. Totally. Yes. Yeah, there's lots, lots to say, even though there's no question. <laughs> yeah. Great questions. Some, some tough questions. That's, that's uh, yeah, it was tough. Yeah. It was tough a little bit because... Because i got to break this habit of not reading questions. <laughs> <laughs> but no, sometimes you do better when you don't read them. Because then, then I overthink them. Well, exactly. I because you're the I matrix mat twin. I matrix them too. Yes, yes, yes. This and when you don't read them, then your your ahas come just your, mm. what do you call them again? Your Claricognizance. No, well, that too, but your analogies. Analogies, yeah. yeah. If you think too much, you wouldn't get the analogies. Yeah. So I think, I think you actually do yourself a better service by not reading them. <sighs> That's my opinion. Anyways... Happy Halloween. Yes. Happy, happy Halloween. Sam and whatever else you may celebrate. We always like to have fun. So this was our creative fun. And apparently next year is all figured out already. Yes, it is. <laughs> if it's like if it's like how fast this this year went, it'll feel like it's about six weeks from now. And we'll be off on the next Hopefully thing. a little longer. Yikes. Anyways. And, and remember, oh. this, this hat will come back. Okay, yes, it will. Okay. And it might have a twin. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, we love you guys. Thanks yes. for your questions, and we will be back again. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.